in this fine pipe and book by the fireplace. Isn't it amazing to get lost in the school book? It's my favorite. Let's have a look at what the graphic design artists are doing in Chapter 5, Revolutions in Design. The De Stiel movement was started in the Netherlands by Piet Mondrian, Bart van der Lick, Gerrit Reitveld, and Theo van Duisburg. They started the De Stiel, or the Style movement, in 1917 in response to the trauma of the First World War. They shared the same Neoplatonist bias as the purist, which was guided by the concept of an abstract ideal of universal harmony. This movement had a strong utopian theme, which they represented art with purified art, by simplifying all forms into basic geometric shapes, strong vertical and horizontal lines, and simple colors, they could make universal and non-biased art. Let's look at an example. This is obviously a normal image of three awesome dudes. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Let's just chill this bitch! This is how a non-objective painting can be derived by the artist's study of awesomeness. De Stiel was created as a universal design style that was not limited to the fine art realm. Rather, it was to be a glorious utopia for all types of visual culture housed under one set of principles. Van Duisburg quietly began exploring new artistic styles behind Mondrian's back much like Jafar was scheming behind the Sultan's back in Aladdin. This led to Van Duisburg adopting the oblique designs of Lizitsky, where he made a series of paintings in which the familiar rectangular blocks were turned at 45 degree angles. This, of course, was a huge slap in the face to Mondrian, who felt that the diagonal compositions introduced elements of personal expression, which violated the universal original concepts behind De Stiel. <laughs> Oh, that Van Duisburg. Oh, hey there, Mondrian. I like what you're doing, but let's turn everything at a 45 degree angle and screw up your whole philosophy. Ha! What a Van Duisburg. Hey, you're back. You joined us just in time for another story. There, there, have a seat. Once upon a time, in a land in Sarah Palin's backyard, there was a group of artists known as the Constructivists. These contracted constructing constructors based their entire visual aesthetic on a sculpture done by Vladimir Tatlin, which sort of looked like this. These artists were led by Vivara Stepanova and her husband, Alexander Rodchenko, and a lot of them decided to renounce fine art completely. Constructivists came up with the term productivism to show that they intended to make work that served a practical purpose towards communism. Since the main function of their art was to complement the new worker state, they coupled their work with industrial production and proceeded to design practical goods, like propaganda posters, workers' clothes, and government buildings. Under the constructivist influence, designers were able to enjoy a status upgrade in society, one which was completely absent before. Some designers even rejected the term artist and instead chose to go by engineer or constructor, showing a more practical role as well as displaying knowledge and inclusion of industrial technology. Well everybody, I don't feel like talking anymore. I'm quite parched. So I suggest you leave now. Toodles.